I'm Ashish Shah. I'm very excited to be part of the AD Weekender. I'm going to be doing a special masterclass on something really close to my heart. Genre furniture is um, probably the world's first open edition furniture. Um, uh, furniture in, in a way uh, design uh, because you see these in multiple different forms and multiple different finishes um, and multiple different ways all around the world now uh, the best way to buy them is is completely dependent on your budget so if you have a budget for buying original I would highly recommend it that's what where I buy from um, I find these pieces not only really comfortable but they are also great aesthetically pleasing pieces and obviously great investment um, for for me the best two galleries uh, are uh, Patrick Segman and uh, gallery downtown both in Paris um, both of these galleries uh, show at every major fair in the world from Art Basel, Design Miami um, to uh, uh, to pad apart from that you also have the Canadian Center of Architecture in Montreal where you can go and research about these pieces. A lot of important architects like Axel Bebo, Pierre Ivanovich um, uh, and many many more uh, use these, uh, these pieces, original pieces uh, in most of their buildings. So um, similarly in India you'll see a lot of architects now using them. Um, I think um, apart from that there is not much that has been kind of um, done for these iconic pieces. Uh, you can obviously view them at uh, in the permanent collections of museums like the MoMA and the Tate, um, but also um, see them online when there are exhibitions or um, uh, auctions for the same. Apart from the easy chair, um, I love the office chair, I love um, the genre sofas, um, the assembly chair but my favorite is the kangaroo chair um, for the simple fact that it's one of the lowest chairs it's about just I think the lowest part of the seat is about 10 inches from the ground but I can I can for, for sure tell you that the tallest person can sit on it the most in the most comfortable way and it's really ergonomically designed and it it gives you um, it also kind of just sits beautifully in the space without without coming within the eye eye level and I find that really, really exciting. So for me, that's really one of my favorite chairs. I also have a pair of these louvers um, that I stumbled upon and I made into a light in my bedroom. So it works in night lamp. So it's just kind of something that moves and the light is behind it. So I can um, actually control the amount of light that I want um, in the room. Genre furniture is uh, probably the first piece of furniture with an open edition and have an iconic form. Um, the best way to find these chairs is to go on to uh, a website like First Tips or to buy it from an auction house. Auction houses are definitely more expensive sometimes because you don't know where the bidding is going to reach and then you're paying a buyer's premium and then you're paying um, obviously the other things that come with it. Um, but galleries like Patrick Seguin and Gallery Downtown is where I buy most, my, most of my pieces from. Both of these galleries are based in Paris, have the most amazing collection of uh, uh, pieces and not only collection of pieces but they have the most amazing collection of books and, um, uh, and um, catalogs that you can actually study from. Um, they, they have well documented pieces, you're, you're for sure, you know for sure that these are originals and um, they come with a provenance certificate um, but that said these chairs are expensive the easy chairs that you see in the house are from gallery downtown uh, which i bought from uh, art basel um, in ba art basel basel back in uh, 2015 or 14. Um, but yes when you buy it from galleries like that you have to pay for a lot of things on the top which is um, your um, du import duties, your transportation, your crating. Um, so all of that is a plus, plus, plus. Um, then you can also buy editions of these chairs. You get some phenomenal editions by brands like Phantom Hands, Casina, and um, uh, another brand in Soho in New York called Industry West. Um, these range, these are definitely almost maybe 20 to 30% 
uh, of the cost of the chair if you're buying an original, but they are a great uh, way to buy, um, p acquire pieces that will look great into your, in your space because they follow the same proportions as the original one. They have beautiful finishes. They also have a very um, cleaned up edges, you know. So when it comes to the cost of the chair, um, the, you have multiple options. You have multiple people you can buy it from. If you want the cheapest option, it would be to get it made from a contractor, carpenter, which would cost you about ten to 15,000 for the easy chair. I think let's go with the easy chair because I, that would give you a price barometer and I could, I'll be able to equivocate that with the other dealers and vendors. So with a contractor, it's about ten to 15,000, depending on the wood he uses and depending on his skill factors, depending on his uh, capabilities in terms of his workshop and factory um, and the numbers you buy. Um, I think if you were to go to um, a brand like Phantom Hands or Industry West, um, I would say that would cost you about 50,000 Indian rupees. Um, if you went to, if you bought it from a dealer like Tahir Ali or Chikri Doshi, um, it would cost you about 1.5 to 2 lakhs. Um, Chikri Doshi also has made a brass chair, which is actually quite beautiful. And I love the fact that it's kind of re is a reinvention of the same chairs. Um, but the materials change, the materiality has changed and it's still made, handmade and talks about the craft. Um, that's for about 2 lakhs. I had it in my recent sale for uh, Oatlo, which was um, back in, uh, I think, April, May um, this year. And uh, then you have the next option would be to buy it from dealers internationally where I bought mine for about six to seven thousand um, um, euros each and then you obviously pay for transportation packaging and duties um, so the landed cost is much more um, 2015 I have a catalog here with me from the right auction that was a catalog for uh, Le Corbusier and Pierre Jean Ray's furniture and back in 2015, October, there was a sale and they have an easy chair here, a pair of easy chair, I think, yeah, which was for about 15 to 20,000 um, dollar, US dollars. Um, but I think this is 10, 2015, so I think in five years, the prices would have escalated um, and the bid would have gone much higher then. It's very common to find replicas or fakes or um, edition works of the Chandigarh chair, the easy chair, uh, the library chair of, of Pierre Jean Ray. The best way to find out if it's an original or a fake is to first turn the chair around because most important, the best, most important thing is to see the back of every piece. Uh, you tend to kind of see a big difference between the front and the back if it's not an original, but otherwise the wear is consistent throughout in an original chair. Um, Another way to find out is to look at the joinery. Uh, Pierre Jean Ray and Le Corbusier worked with only a few set of carpenters um, who knew the actual joinery because they were drawings that they made for them. So you would see a lot of these chairs that had this um, particular angular joinery, joinery with, the, the, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the joints with very few metal nails. Um, and otherwise you'll find very different uh, joinery details. One of the most common one that is very famous is the angular one in the compass chair. Um, so if you see those, you know for sure these are original because most most carpenters would not know that that is a way to um, uh, make the chair. Um, another way to do is lab test the metal part of the chair. Lab when you when you get um, a chair, there are always a few nails and screws and hinges that can be, can be tested for the age and it will give you a fair amount of age um, on that chair. Um, another way would be to, for me, for example, I, had, I have a set of this kangaroo chair which I picked, uh, bought from uh, Chiki Doshi and it came in a trunk um, that was uh, uh, the original owners and that was a good way for me to know it's kind of labeled and numbered and you know, um, uh, original. Also these chairs had this nylon caning that was done then uh, and then painted on with a dark mocha and you can see the wear of it 
an age on it. Um, another way to check is the numbering. Most of these chairs, if they come, come from public buildings and government buildings, they were numbered with a white paint usually and usually they have numbers like PS024. So if it's from Punjab University or um, from the Legislative Assembly, you'll see the code numbers and you'll see that, but that's been copied a lot too. But then you kind of get a fair idea. A nice way to understand that is uh, I, I saw a beautiful chair, an easy chair that was numbered and then polished mm -hmm. on. So obviously the person who restored it didn't know that um, uh, we keep we're supposed to retain this, but you could see through that polish the numbering behind. So that obviously says the age of the chair. Um, yeah, these are pretty, pretty much the main um, main points. And yeah, the best way to buy these chairs is through a dealer, a, a legitimate dealer, and auctions, so that you don't get um, you don't get a fake by paying the prices of an original, and you get a provenance certificate.